it's time to add some little critters into the foreground for fun. So I'm starting with some of these, this brownish color mixed with a little bit Payne's Gray to make it a little bit darker than it is. And a fine tipped size zero brush. And I'm just going to dive into this and see. This is a shadowy little fox. Grabbing my white gel pen for a white tip to his tail. And damp brush to soften the edge of my silhouette a little bit. So that it's not a stark line I think he needs a little bit of white on his bib as well. And his eye. Blending the white on the bib a little bit so that it's not so stark as well. And also continuing to blend the boundaries around the face. And now we have a shadowy little fox running through this scene. I think he needs friends. Don't you? Same approach that I had with the previous fox. Taking my dark brown with my fine tipped brush and creating first the silhouette and then later going back and softening the edges So this is still the silhouette phase of things. Tip of his tail. A little bit of white in the bib and on the eye.
damp brush to blend the edges a little bit. And now one fox has become two foxes. And I guess why stop at two? <laughs> Let's make a third one. This one has a little open mouth yipping as he chases the other two. tail curling up. White tip, white id, white eye, softening edges. Now I think I also need to make the ground heavier and more defined where these guys are. So I'm adding some ground texture in so that I have somewhere to add shadows. I'm going to take my bigger brush for this. This little brush is not doing it. A little foreground slope cutting across the front here. And just as I did in earlier stages, pulling out the upper wet edge of this slope, and in this case, doing it in these grassy tendrils.
I think this four, this fox in the very front needs to be chasing something. And so I'm taking my little white gel pen once again and giving him a little will-o'-wisp to chase after. In fact, giving all three of them something to chase after. Just like with the stars keeping the spacing uneven on these so that they don't look too regular. But there is a flow to it also. You can see it's following an arc along the bottom curve here with the foxes. Adding some trilling wisps of leaves, blowing off the tree. Mingling in with these sparking wisps. adding some final bit of texture to the tree bark as well. which sort of vanished earlier with all the layers and glazes and everything that was going on. A little bit of highlight as well on that trunk and in the grasses on that hillside.
little bit of water on my brush and using it to lift out little bits of texture here in the ground. The green does not lift as readily as the blue does, but it still does a little bit. And what's interesting is that I had mixed a lot of the mica pigment into this area when I was laying down the washes. And when I'm doing this lifting now, it's actually removing the sparkly stuff from those areas and leaving some of the, well, it, it's removing some of the pigment as well, but mostly removing the sparkly stuff. So it's this very interesting resulting texture that contrasts with the surrounding areas, the surrounding ground area here, I mean, where the surrounding part is very sparkly, but the parts that I'm lifting now are less so. And so there's this visual light element thrown in, as well as the straight up color and contrast uh, element. And I think things are just about done with a few more little bits of this. And this piece should be just about complete then.